Lunar Inner, uh, you know everybody here. I'm Rhonda Jones, and to my left here is my co-host. What's your name? Monica Livingston. Monica Livingston. Otherwise known as Mo. Mo. <laughs> your name, ma'am? Ruthie Wyvern. Ma'am? Kimberly Johnson. Kimberly Johnson. All righty. So we are glad you tuned in. We hope that you are a returning viewer, and if you are a new viewer, uh, give us a chance. Don't just poo-poo us right off the beginning. We, we come with the uh, slow start sometimes, like the Preakness Stakes, and then we, uh, we're we not sprinters, we're marathoners. And so by the time it comes around the fourth time on the track, we'll be there. So uh, give us patience. And that's what we teach here at the New Covenant Group. We teach a lot about what God is, who God is, and we know that he is someone with ultimate love, doesn't keep a record of wrong, so kind, so patient, and we try to emulate his character. We fail uh, at times, but a lot of times we succeed. And we also believe that if you know the character of your father, and I use the term father because that's how he's been presented to us, and we can understand that as, as mere mortals. Um, if you know the character of your heavenly father, uh, odds are you, you will emulate him. And so the character of God has always been good. It's never been bad. And you'll get to know us a little bit better through the show. Uh, today we promised uh, something that we are not going to fulfill. And you'll realize too that we do that every now and then. We were going to do uh, Great or Not Great and try to mimic another show we have. Um, but we're not going to do that this week, maybe next week. But we are going to fulfill this promise of showing you what to make people, if you don't have a lot of money for Christmas, but you still want to give because it's the spirit of giving that makes Christmas Christmas. Um, because we were given the most wonderful example of love um, while we celebrate it this time of year. And so that's what we want to show you. So give to whoever you can give to. Just give, 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 give. If you don't have a lot of money to do it, you can make things. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's start off with Ruthie. Okay, I have two items. One is made from uh, magnolia. Uh, what would you call Whatever it? they're called. This is called a cone. I don't know yeah. what it's called. And uh, my sister gathered them out of her yard and dried them out, and then she painted them, and we put on beads and little sparkle jewelries with a mm. little star on top. These go so to cute. my children, my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren, so this will be put in the mail next week. Uh-oh. Right. Very nice. And this is a box made from a Christmas card. Cool. You take the card, cut it in half, and on the bottom half, on one side and the top, you cut one-eighth inch off each. Then on the inside, I don't know if you can see the writing or not, but you Put an X from I mean a line from corner to corner, and then you fold down to the center of the card on both ends and both sides. Then you clip there, and then you just put them together, glue them, and you've got a gift card that you can put a little bit of money in or some candy or, and then you do the top the same way. This is the front of the card and the bottom of the card. So this is something that everybody can do. For children can do yes, this. Yes, children can do it. If children can do it, and then you sir, put it you together can. and you've got a really neat card. And it depends. I mean, box. And it depends right. on the size of the card, the size of the box. But you could put candy in here, a little bit of money, or a gift box. card, jewelry box, yeah. gift a gift card yeah. to yeah. you know mm -hmm. wherever, Amazon or iTunes yeah. or something. So. Fascinating. And, and save your Christmas cards this year so you got lots of cards to make lots of boxes next year. I've Very got good. cards from about three or four years. I brought some and just left them here for the kids so they can do some more if they want to. Nice. Very good. There you I go. I love that. Recycled craft. Recy mm -hmm. It's a recycled nice. craft which turns into a recycled gift. Mm -hmm. And so that's just two examples. Kimberly. Um, I have some earrings. I'm wearing a pair. These are simple, simple. You can get from Walmart miniature Christmas ornaments. Doesn't have to necessarily be a Christmas ball. And you can get the earring hooks as well. You just hook the earring hook to the top of the ornament, tie a bow, and super simple. 
can also earrings. Use snowflakes or bells. You can use the snowflakes. There's all kinds of, kind of miniature ornaments, um, different places. I know Walmart. It's probably I've more than. I've seen them in Target too. They have like a long. Time. I would probably Dollar General, probably. Um, and you don't necessarily have to be the ball. There's been bells and um, reindeer, I guess, maybe. Nice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Very simple. Now, uh, what is something that maybe if they didn't want to, um, if they wanted to have something that they could wear year round, what are some ideas that you could hook to these little, I think Kimberly calls them French hooks, the kind that, like a shepherd's crook almost yeah. that you stick in your ear. What uh, are some things we could, tree, flower, Oh, like a dried thing, like a na natural thing, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Or, or possibly, just, uh, even if it's uh, a little tree shape, like because mm -hmm. you can find those. And if you just get the little ornament and you don't want it to be a Christmas ornament, paint over it with green and recycle. There you go. Yeah, you could probably get beans. orange ornaments, maybe, and paint a jack lantern face on if you wanted to do something for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities Halloween. are endless. You could take mm -hmm. beads. Um, you know, they sell all kinds of things in the store where you can actually make the earring earring. Mm -hmm. Or you could take beads and run it on a string and, you know, make a little circle hoop. Or, mm -hmm. Right. You know, the kids could even do that part of it. And then you tie sure. it off and put it on an earring or, um, you know, just anything that you, you know, a charm for a necklace or yeah. a brooch. Or a necklace that was beady but... You broke, broke it, mm -hmm. and they have all of it. You're, you're thinking, I'm going to, you know, restring it one day. That day will never come. So take yeah, some of that. I have one of those bags on my dresser <laughs> full of beads. And... Uh-oh. I know what I'm getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but I do Oh, I have to it. make sure I remember not to do that now. <laughs> no, I love that. So she can show me just see. I told y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Momo, show us, show us that puzzle thing first. That's intriguing. Okay. Well, I actually have two of them here that are made from puzzles. And one was made by a friend of mine for me for Christmas. And she gave it to me as an early Christmas present so I could have it on my tree. And the other one was made by my son last year at school. So it just goes to show you it can be done by adults, kids, however, and, and there's different variations. Um, I'll show you my son's. Um, he did this in his uh, little preschool class last year. They painted some of the puzzle pieces red and some of them green, some of them white. And uh, they just did the front side on this one, put a little piece of paper and taped a little picture of himself in it. And on one of them with a little Sharpie wrote the year. Attached a little piece of fishing line to it, and you have a cute little ornament for your tree. Turn it around so people can see yeah. what the front looks see. like. It looks like dog mess on the back. <laughs> Sorry. But very cute very little cute. ornament. I have to say, uh, the kid one looks just as good as the adult one, in my opinion. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> I mean, it just depends on what you like, but I like them both. I mean, they're well, different. Yeah, I do too. But. This one was made by my friend and her daughter, so the kids did help. Um... But it's little painted puzzle pieces. These are smaller pieces made into a little wreath once again. They used, uh, looks like puffy paint and made little berries. And then attached a ribbon at the top, made a bow, and then a ribbon for the hook. can hang on your tree. And you can find these puzzles, you know, at thrift stores for like a quarter for a box. They don't have all their pieces. You don't mm -hmm. need them all. You could use the bigger size. I have a couple or the of smaller size my house that are mi missing pieces. Yeah. Perfect. So this is something that, is that you cool. could do with the kids even. You could even paint them up ahead of time or throw something down so they don't get paint everywhere, hand them the paint, let them go to town, Very give them something cool. like wax paper or parchment paper or something tin mm -hmm. foil to put it on and let it dry and then um, help them glue it together in the shape that you want. Another thing that uh, was a kid craft that was done, um, we did it with our Girl Scouts last year, actually. We just took popsicle sticks, and they painted them whatever color they wanted, put a little glue on them, and they could put little doodads on the end, made like a little snowflake ornament for the tree. So this could be like a little boredom buster that when the kids are out of school for uh, Christmas break. Um, give them a little paint and some popsicle sticks and let them have fun. And grandparents dig this kind of stuff too, by the way, don't they? Yes, we do. <laughs> we like to keep it in the memory box and put it on the tree from year to year. I will say this, it is nice to get um, something that has you know, the date on it that your grandchildren have given you and then put it on your tree and you just see the you know, evolution of you know, 
obviously their uh, their pictures and mm-hmm. then their handiwork and it is it is awesome it really is yeah. just busting your chops about that anything else you want to show us let me hold that these sure dads um the other thing is you know if you're more talented or have a specific talent you know um i've had people that have made little crocheted santa clauses um basically you know they have a little bit more talent than i do in that respect i do yeah. not have that skill. my youngest sister does that type stuff but really yeah. simple they just crocheted crocheted a little santa face put a pin back on it put a little bell on the end Got you a little something decorative to wear for Christmas. And I did wear this yesterday in the Christmas parade. Right. And, oh, and please uh, make sure you don't give it to them like on Christmas Day. Yeah. You don't have to give a present on Christmas Day. You can give it way ahead of time so they can use it, it, you know, right. and then you're good. This one was even simpler than the last, probably. Um, I don't know that much about crocheting, so I don't know that for certain. But <laughs> they simply crocheted a wreath found one of those little ornaments that we're talking about this it happens to be a little elf in a sleigh or a little santa in a sleigh it's cute. very mm-hmm. cute glued mm-hmm. it on there put a bow at the top and attached a little piece of a uh, ribbon or uh, this kind of gold twine here for an uh, ornament or you could turn this into a necklace and earring or whatever mm-hmm. um, brooch so very cute and then the last thing i had um, this was made last year by ruth's sister ann she took some felt and cut it and folded it in half, or folded it in half and cut it and made a little horse head. And you can so stick your camera, candy cane or, yeah. right through, hook it right through, and then you can it hang it like on your tree. Horse. And it looks like a little, you know, hobby horse. Mm-hmm. And very cute, all colors. And it felt some googly eyes. And this was a suede material, but you could use felt for that as well. And then just a little piece of stiffer ribbon. So all kinds of little cute crafts, and the kids could probably make these too. You just yeah. would have to help with the cutting, but mm-hmm. you know, very nice. Imagine the kids could do that real easy. So, so obviously, folks, if you're gonna uh, do something for Christmas, thank you, sweetie. Probably get it started now. <laughs> Keep this in my Pringle can right beside you. Oh, okay. Okay, hope. now I don't think anybody took me serious when we had our ladies' craft day about these Pringle cans, but I made one. <laughs> I know I saw it. Like I said, nobody took me real serious. <laughs> She's wanting the cookies. That's that's her hint there. Are y'all noticing that? All right. My husband is addicted to Pringles. And um, obviously y'all can tell, well, he's addicted to them, but I, then I have to share in the addiction because when he starts eating them, I'm like, oh, give me three. I always just say three. Right. That's, and that's famous. We're famous. Three at a time. And then it, I times it by 10, and then we've had a can. But these do say multigrain, so we tried. Uh, but we have so many of these cans, and I saw this on Pinterest. And what you do, and I've never been able to make a uniform cookie in my life. Now, i got a question real quick. Uh-oh. Would you want to clean this out and, like, take a, a damp paper towel, maybe damp, not wet, and get the chip smell out before you put cookies in kind of like the pesto in the in the hands <laughs> no no just just shake it real good and bang it on the table and then i'm giving her a little grief in. from last week <laughs> I, actually i actually blew in every one of them to get it <laughs> well i did think of that i was like i was just blow it all out and then i was like that's pretty gross that would be nasty so I, and I didn't so if you get something from me that you know anywho but what you do is you take some um wrapping paper that everybody has usually and if you have an empty chip can um you wrap it and i should have wrapped it um for you so you can see how pretty it looks um and then you make your cookies and you you know stack them in here and make sure they're that round somehow i've never done it in my life but some people know how to do it and you i don't know how many dozen it would probably like two and a half dozen and then you wrap it up, uh, put some twine around it, make it look pretty, and you deliver it as, you know, a food gift. Some people like food gifts, obviously. Um, but anyway, I want y'all to try that because our next subject is, you know, who, who would you give something like this to? Who would I make some cookies for, wrap this up, make it look pretty, put a tag on it, and take it to? Do y'all, I mean, do we do it to the do we give cookies to the post people 
the hairdressers, I do. obviously. Yeah, I mean, it, you really could give it to anybody. Your next door neighbor. Next mm -hmm. door neighbors. Okay, now, if you're not in the habit of doing that, stretch out from your comfort zone this year and do that. Uh, I'm gonna try to find the least possible suspect and uh, make some cookies and decorate it and say, here you go, you know. It's such a small little step, but it can also bridge a gap. Mm -hmm. It can, sure. you know, it can even heal, you know, this mm -hmm. gesture of, of kindness. Thank you. And You're we, welcome. We did this last year and so, so we're surprised two, two of our neighbors reciprocated. So we, we, uh, we do it every year with our kids. We put a plate of different cookies and we took it to neighbors and, um, and we got stuff back from neighbors people we had never spoken to before just waved you know as we saw them on mm -hmm. taking kids to school and yeah i took cookies cool. to Pinair, the girls at what that oh, take care of me that's a and good I idea i need to do that of cookies there for them to share very nice yeah, bank employees love you? that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay now name somebody that you might could um share with this year that you normally don't um well you know in past years when that i work, you normally don't yeah okay well <laughs> <laughs> do you have that uh you know hard to uh get along with neighbor or friend you know so, or you know family member family member crew member <laughs> crew member crew member crew um, so now they're the same <laughs> but you know just anybody um you know somebody that wouldn't be expecting it you know have some mm -hmm. in your car you know when you're going somewhere and you know yeah even see somebody holding a sign on the side of the road you know oh, exactly a a random act of kindness this and year you know you don't have to only take cookies at christmas time <gasps> if you true. have a doctor's appointment in the middle of the year that would be a great time to carry some cookies because they definitely wouldn't right. expect it very good last year i gave salsa to my therapist <laughs> i told him i said a little something to spice up your christmas i make the homemade salsa and so I made up some and took it in with a bunch of different bags of chips and just, you know. Very nice. They were salsa, but they all thanked me for <laughs> it. They all liked it. I mean, see, I was listening to a song on the way to get uh, some pizza today for our lunch. And it said, what have you done this year? And I got it thinking, you know, I don't think I've been as, you know, um, spontaneous giver. Uh, you know the tried and true the ones you know the one you know that ask you but but to be spontaneous and just go and, and give and uh, do something for some body I think it's just a small gesture but it can mean so so much and you were talking about reciprocation you know sometimes when somebody gives you cookies then you're like oh what am I gonna do for them that's not always a bad thing it, it gets no. you thinking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it gets the conversation started Right. And at the New Covenant Group, we, we like to do that. That's why you'll see on our network, on our Ustream channel, we have people that run the gamut from atheism to fundamentalism. Uh, and so we're just getting a conversation started. Now, not everybody is 100% right, and not everybody is 100% wrong. And so we can just learn from each other. You know, it, it might be in my opinion that some of them are 99.9% .9 I'm not saying it is, but it could be. <laughs> it could be. Um, and vice versa. So let's just learn from each other this coming year. You know, we're at the very end of the year. We need to say, what have we done this year? Um, and don't let 2013 be like this year. Let's have some improvement. We talk about encouraging, but, you know, we need to encourage somebody just as hard as we possibly can. Um, it's easy to overlook people, and I've just, I have been remiss. I'm just going to confess all that. We do have a, a viewer comment, and uh, much as I like to gobble this one up, we'll, we'll share it. It says you can also put the horse head in someone's bed to threaten them mafia style. <laughs> so, but with a sweet take on it. That must uh -huh. have been joy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking that sounds like my husband made that comment. Wow. Do we know him or what? And we're you shall not say, huh? What we're trying to do is get people to be nice this year, <laughs> not to be ugly. Exactly. <laughs> well, now, that, that wasn't ugly. 
because joy likes to do surprising things to make you laugh and yeah to me that's what it would do and... you know find this <laughs> yeah horse with a candy cane in it horse <laughs> yeah kind Watch of like out. a passive aggressive uh mafia don mm-hmm. possibly okay. want to be mean want to be nice one kimberly it's me okay kimberly has a subject that we've skirted around before um how to make your kids do something yes easier said than done and this happens to be you go ahead and set it okay. up um, pick this book up at the library what's the title french kids eat everything french kids eat everything and um it's a really good book it's very entertaining this lady is from canada and her husband was from france and they moved to france for a year and culturally she did not fit in and part of the reason why she didn't was because her kids were picky Mm -hmm. and not only is that not something that's quote allowed it's not even it's unheard of children eat what's put in front of them period and so she had a hard time adjusting and but i i I was floored um one of the things in here is a menu from the school she had a five-year-old going into kindergarten and she was given a menu, and the first thing she noticed was there was no options on the menu. You, you eat what's put in front of you, and they have a four-course meal my goodness. at lunch. How long do they have for lunch? They have an my hour. My son, they never make it. An hour. Oh, okay. They have an hour. Maybe so. They might get yeah, this one. A, a, meal is ex- course a meal is expected to take a long time, and they, yeah. set, they set aside time for that. And in, in kindergarten, um, on Monday... They had endive salad for their first course. Uh, second course was Alaskan salmon with uh, potatoes. Uh, the cheese course was blue cheese, and the dessert was yogurt with apricots. And <laughs> well, we're all thinking our kids wouldn't touch any of this, right? <laughs> That's what she was thinking, and I mean, it goes. Um, uh, appetizer for Tuesday was pate. I wouldn't, but with pickles. I don't, I don't understand why Let's pate. Pate with pickles. Um, pickles. Main course was sautéed beef. Uh, salad with the excuse me the cheese course was goat cheese with bruschetta mm. and um, chocolate eclairs for dessert and the French people are notoriously thin people they are they eat less and they take a longer time to do it they well you know it, it's very true you know I took French class in school and we had some that uh, some French exchange students that came over and they were just kind of floored by the amount of time that we had for lunch at our school because they did attend school with us while they were here. And, um, you know, none of them stayed with me, but they were like, you know, you guys have to rush, rush, rush. And, yeah, they think it's know. ill-mannered and disgusting. Throughout yeah. the book, they told her her children were Ill- ill-mannered and that they ate with their fingers. It was disgusting. It probably is. It probably it may be. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but probably they start is. very young giving the child... I mean, where we feed babies just one thing and wait two or three days to see if the baby will like it. Or um, is they're, allergic. Right. Yeah. So we do that. They don't. I didn't just give it mine. To no, they didn't. That, that's a, I it think would, it's a newer train of thought. I, I it had is. a young one that was probably not even a month old, and I fed him turnip green pot liquor mm-hmm. with cornbread in it. They put it and in a bottle. he loved it, and it didn't bother him. I mean, like, he grew Leek up. soup. Put it in a bottle. Give it right to him. The, the drawback, they're, they're very, very structured with meal times. Breakfast is at a certain time, lunch, dinner. But that routine is supposedly supposed to be something yeah. that's good for your body anyway. So. It can be, but they apply it also to breastfeeding. And their breastfeeding rate is extremely low, which you've nursed a child. Um, you know, if, if you've got it in your head, you're going to nurse your child every six hours regardless. When that baby cries, your milk lets down. And if it's two hours from feeding time, you're in pain. So breastfeeding is not popular. It's just too difficult. But they, they do have very structured, and, and adults do not eat in between meal snacks. That's for children. Children can have one snack a day. Well, it sounds like they've got the handle on it, really, honestly. You know, they're, they're yeah, healthier, they're thinner, they're this, <laughs> so, I mean, we eat well, like I was going to right share the rules with you. Yes, please Our do. Our 10 rules here for, for proper eating. Um, I fail at many of them, but we're trying. <laughs> uh, the first rule is parents are in charge of what you eat. Parents pick the menu. Yeah, they buy the food, might as well. <laughs> and no emotional eating, which means oh. if your kid's crying, you can't give them a cookie to make them happy. 
Well, if we teach them that as kids, then we're not having the problem that a lot of us have as adults. <laughs> That's true. true. And, but no, um, no. if you don't scream in Walmart, I'll get you a candy bar on the way out. I've been guilty of that. <laughs> um, you're no yeah. longer shorter to cook. <laughs> yeah, no separate meals for the kids. Kids eat what's on the table. No, nice. Nothing. But um, with that, she says, make sure there is at least one thing on the table that you know your child will eat. Because um, many, eating is supposed to be fun. That's one of the other rules. It's a social event in France. That's when the family takes time to get together. And yeah. they spend two hours at the table enjoying each other and enjoying the food. It shouldn't be difficult. Right. And their, their idea of conflict, um, that's rule number six, here we go. Um, you don't have to like anything, but you have to taste everything. And you don't have the option of making a nasty face at mom or telling her it's disgusting or I don't want to eat this or blah. Mm. We've been doing this at home. This is the one we're practicing. They get one taste. They don't have to swallow it even. They just yeah. have to taste it, but they cannot make a face at me. They can't tell me it's disgusting. And if they don't like it, that's fine. And in the French way of thinking is there's no conflict if there's no opponent. So to go with the child saying they don't like it, you use serene indifference. You don't like it? Fine, maybe next time. Well, I'm not going to make a geopolitical comment at this point towards <laughs> okay. the French in our history, but we do love the French. And uh, But I can see where now they, how they responded in certain predicaments throughout history I can yeah, this understand is probably now. A carryover. <laughs> it's a carryover, and I can see now. See, that's how you learn. You say, mm -hmm. you know, what makes a person do that? What makes right. a person respond that way? Now I can see, you know, I learned something today. Now I won't hold it against them. I'll okay, say, that's but how so they were. We up. we have implemented this. I used to tell my kids, you have to eat a bite. It's good for you. And now it's tasted. If you don't like it, that's fine. Maybe next time you'll like it. True. You have to taste it again next time. But you don't tell me it's nasty. You can tell me no, thank you. We had a little girl come over she lives across the street and she's notoriously picky and we had turnip soup and and I told them you can taste it if you make yucky faces at me though I'm going to put a bowl full of it in front of you so don't make yucky faces at me you can say no thank you and I put that in her mouth and she goes then her eyes started watering <laughs> and she goes no thank you <laughs> I think I would have said the same thing she was very polite Turnip soup. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I like turnips. I don't know why nobody else in my family does. I love turnips, but mm. but that's um, no snacking in between meals. Soup. Well, she says that that's one of the ways to get a kid to try something new is if you take a vegetable like zucchini that's very mild tasting, mm -hmm. mix the flavor of the turnip with the zucchini in a soup, so they're just tasting a little turnip, and then slowly you increase it. And she put she put the soup in a bowl and then make a face with butter, little eyes and a smiley face with butter. And say, oh, you're going to eat an eye first? Are you going to eat their mouth first? And they'd start eating sure. with the butter, and then they get the taste. And <clears throat> so it's just that's, yeah, making it fun. Yeah, yeah. So, that's so good. tasting something new is not scary. It's not something you force on them. They just have to taste it. You don't like it, fine. But it, if it's yeah. fun, go ahead and eat it. So we're trying. Very and good. no snacking in between meals, which I fail at. <laughs> She said one of the biggest faux pas she made was she had gone with her daughter to the school and they had hors d'oeuvres out and they were beautiful little little crackers with different kinds of um, mousse on top of it and she was sampling them and it was for the children <laughs> <laughs> because adults do not eat in between meals. That is a sign of immaturity and she, wow. she just didn't she know that the crackers <laughs> with the beet mousse was for the five for the kids <laughs> yeah you would have thunk that you know what I'm saying? I, I would have been munching away i would have been wow but she said the most important rule is to have fun with it and make meal time a fun time and especially you know we, we try to do that at the holidays mm -hmm. but in france they do that they every day they set the table they put out good dishes and they make meal time something enjoyable and i think that's one of the things we could we could implement Right. Yeah. Well, I remember as a kid, we always um, took turns setting the table when we got old enough that we could manage the dishes and stuff without breaking something, or they were set down, and then we just spaced them out. And we always sat around the table and ate, um, unless, of course, we were outside for something, and then we had a table out there, but, you know, it was more, it wasn't, you know, sit-down dinner. Um, but that was always family time. Now, I do remember that ours was eat it, clear your plate. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I, I remember a time when my um, sister didn't want to eat English peas, but had to swallow <laughs> them like pills with water. Oh, wow, no way. So, yeah. Mm. I, I ate my vegetables no problem, but, you know, um, she, of course, had issues with some of them, mostly anything green. <laughs> so, a well, good you, number of them. You know, I told, I had a problem with English peas uh, when I was younger and in elementary school. I, I mean, I knew it. I'm going in, and so I tell these people, look, I can't eat it. And back then, that was a long time ago, in the 60s, you have to eat, they want you to eat everything. And I say, I can't eat this. I, I don't like them. Yes, you do. You eat them, eat them. Okay. <laughs> so I started eating them and then blah, and just threw up. Of course, everybody else, we all had to leave and go to our classroom. So everybody else gave me the stink eye the rest of the year because, you know, they thought I was something wrong with me. And I guess it was. But I didn't like the peas. I still don't like them. So... <laughs> now, see, the book says that in, in France, that's one of the very last things they introduce a child to because they consider the taste to be too strong for a child. English peas? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're exactly so. right. <laughs> yes. They're horrible. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with boiled okra. Mm. Well, that's just that's Any just kind the of okra. texture. That's just good. That's just the texture. I, the taste Ruthie, is pretty good. Good old the southern texture. girl like you. What in the world's wrong, folks? If you don't if you don't boil your okra till it's so slimy, <laughs> you can't pick it up. You haven't Slides on eaten down. okra before. They're I'm both an English. I like, I'm I like an English. I'm an Englisher. I'm not a southerner. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like don't. The, taste the only way okra, I like but... okra is cooked to pieces in a stew mm. or gumbo. Well, you gotta have them big old whole pieces that you just yeah mm, I know like o, OB loved those and in, in, in earnest I can remember putting this great big plate of this slimy boiled junk on the middle <laughs> of the table and I had the tops pointing part of them one way and part of them the other and they just ate off the same plate just picked it up and swallowed it down there in the kitchen going. <laughs> And I sat there between them and ate my food and just enjoyed my food and enjoyed watching them eat this nasty stuff yeah that's having fun at supper. That's right. <laughs> Viewer comment, and uh, I don't know if this is a crew member trying to say something to embarrass me, but uh, this person says, I prefer to eat Italio Jewish style. And I am happy for you. I don't, I don't know what that is. I know what Italian food is and Jewish food is, but uh, it looks like to me that would be a, a contradiction of terms there. Because Italians uh, are son John's in Italy now, and they eat late, late at night, and they eat for long periods of time too. That's many, difference. many courses. And far as I know, uh, just reading the the good book, the Jews had to get out of Dodge real quick. They couldn't they couldn't sit around eating for a long time. <laughs> they couldn't even wait for the bread to rise up. They had to leave. So, if uh, if you are someone that does enjoy that style, if that's even such a style, please let us know why you prefer that style because we are open to new suggestions obviously so yes, make your kids eat everything on their plate no the french are against that uh, yeah not we didn't do that anyway we did encourage tasting the food but we were real i've, I've always been just real i guess forceful with it you must try one bite you right. must and we've, we've relaxed that to okay just taste it you don't like it maybe next time and we've done that for two weeks and then when my daughter was here today she saw your pasta salad mm -hmm. and i said do you want some she said no thank you and wow. just walked she didn't go yeah gross. at it <laughs> and then she stopped she said mom i just said no thank you I said, good job very good very good yeah so. and maybe next time she'll try a, mm -hmm. a, a little noodle of it very good uh you're like a whole nother psychiatrist couch full of kid eating problems with um, our youngest grandchild yeah mm -hmm. he's very picky and you know I, of course mine was well, always I wasn't going to sit there and make him eat everything on his plate but then I've kind of bounced back and forth because sometimes if I don't you know he doesn't eat anything and, and I mean when I say everything on his plate he doesn't get a plate full he gets like a, a yeah. dollop you know you might get three peas or four peas <laughs> most of the time his sister's plate looks like <laughs> something an adult would eat you know and most of the time she eats off her stuff but yeah. he just you know he's just so picky and you know yeah I, i'm of the uh school that says if they get hungry they're gonna eat something they'll come to you and if they won't eat the breakfast they won't eat their lunch at school they won't eat their supper by the next breakfast they're gonna eat but he's almost an exception to the rule 
but for the most part, they're they're going to eat. They're not going to starve right. to death. Right. They're just not going to, uh, unless there's something drastically wrong, drastically wrong. Um, but anyway, the French, I I I think that's interesting, very interesting. I'd, I'd like to read that too. I'll have to pick up on that. Okay. Not that I'm having to force any kids to eat food, but just for my own. Her her story's self. interesting because yeah. she talks about the year they spent there and the differences. Um, one of the things I did like was uh, in France, school is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. They leave Wednesday open for ballet, gymnastics, the things that we would normally have our kids doing after school. Right. They have a whole day. Right. They have a whole day set aside for that, so that kids can be home in the evening with their family for meal times. Well, well, let me ask yeah. you this. Oh, do they still go to school? And does that really take the ballet? Because, like, who takes them to all this if, if both parents work? Or I, I guess their nannies. I mention, well, I guess our kids preschool and kindergarten. So yeah. I'm, I'm not okay. sure. But the, in France, um, good food, whole organic food is available to everyone. Very nice. Which is something um, they, they criticized her for. She's Canadian, but... She said, in France, anyone off the North American continent that speaks English is an American. <laughs> it don't matter where you come from. If you speak English and you lived on the North American continent, you're an American. And they were saying Americans don't provide good food for people because processed food is cheaper. True. Mm -hmm. And if you have a fixed income, you've got to buy what you can afford to buy. Right. right. And right. They, she said people were very critical of that in France because in France, whole food is available to everyone. Wow, that's very nice, very nice. On the subject of food and kids yes. eating, you know, there's been a lot of change in the school system as to what the kids have available and what yeah. they're, they, they have to choose either a fruit or vegetable with every meal and they're getting away from is, you know, some more of the processed food and, and um, trying to make it healthier and limiting the amount of sugar, like getting away from like your flavored milks and stuff mm -hmm. as much, which to me seems very positive I agree. um now both my kids i pack their lunch most of the time but you know i think that it that it's a good thing and it, it's yeah. a step towards teaching <coughs> kids you know to to make healthier choices and not just having chicken nuggets and pizza on every right you know every day and that's the only thing that's available to them you know um you know i've seen like the little pre the lasagnas, you know, that are, they, they serve in a little um, black container with a lid on it, but it, it looks, it doesn't look like something Stouffer's out of a box. It looks like right. something that was prepared, you know, mm -hmm. um, smelled really good. Mm -hmm. You know, they have salads and, you know, sandwiches that, you know, just aren't, you know, I mean, it looks like the mm -hmm. bread was prepared and stuff. So, I mean, I don't know how much of it's prepared on site, but it's, it's not just breaded chicken right you know that's great frozen right. processed meat Process. and i think that's good but there's been a lot of flack from it too from parents you know yeah. and i can't imagine what's your why? thought on that i mean what have you heard any of the reasons why parents well, are up in arms or i mean is it just because trying to make their little darlings do something they don't want to do or it's probably some of it probably, probably <laughs> and maybe some of them they think their kids aren't going to eat it eat stuff. like you know hungry. i mean that's, if yeah. your child doesn't won't eat lasagna but they'll eat chicken nuggets you know um, but at the same time, you do have that option. Most people providing, you know, yeah. f a meal form. Yeah. Not everybody, because some people, if they don't get it at school, they're not going to get a meal. Yeah. Um, that's and true. and that's another thing is they are, you know, they're they're trying to combat the childhood obesity rates, mm -hmm. and you know, I think that it all has to start at home. But some kids don't have a home life to where they right. have meals at home. Right. The meals right. they true. get are breakfast mm -hmm. and lunch at school. Mm -hmm. That is you true. Know, so. Yeah, you know, and it, it is true uh, what the French say about us as far as you know, we are like pigs and hogs, you know, eating most people. I mean, you know, it's like as f fast as we can gobble it down, you know, we'll gobble it down. I mean, I'm very guilty of that. It's like I have this task in front of me, and I'm going to do it as quick as possible and get get it over with. And um. Ruthie is if you don't enjoy uh -oh. what you eat you are a glutton I heard that on the television just recently so well I enjoy every bite <laughs> so stop to think when you well the reason that it struck home with me because I can remember when I was younger I ate because I knew I had to eat in order to keep my energy to take care of my children mm. I didn't 
taste what I ate, and I didn't particularly like what, you know, I didn't dislike it, but, I, you know, I didn't enjoy it, I should say. Yeah. Right. And then later I, I learned to enjoy it, but when I heard that, I thought, oh, my goodness, for 20 years I was a glutton. <laughs> Yeah, it was just... Although I only weighed 94 pounds, I was a glutton. <laughs> yeah, well, I can understand that. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I do believe that um, building uh, relationships around food, and if that's all you have in common, that's poor. But I do believe that's a good time to fellowship. Right, and right, right. a lot of times our Thanksgivings, um, I, I think in the, those that are there we we eat and then we're so full we just go home we don't have a lot of fellowship time you know and i've been missing that right. um so so this year we're going to have a fish fry and a shrimp fry okay. and uh, chicken nugget fry <laughs> with the coleslaw and beans <laughs> cheese grits something different than turkey and sweet potatoes and you know just well, we had all that Thanksgiving, so... I mean, yeah, let's, you know, that was my mother in My sister started that a few years ago. I mean, she yeah. asked the kids what they wanted, and they had, like, a gumbo and yeah. crab and shrimp, and... I mean, Italians, good to me. I mean, they have, like, lasagnas and, you know... Yeah. But you can start new traditions, and my mother-in-law... Thank you, crew member. My mother-in-law... <laughs> um, we have three minutes, three minutes left. But um, I guess I was getting around to saying... It's good to have fun, like the French say. It's good to think about what you're eating and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good to try to pack your kids healthy lunches and, and encourage healthy eating uh, and not be so upset when the schools are trying to force it. You know, we have a lot of freedom in America. And then whenever somebody tries to put just a little bit of a nudge on you, you just mm -hmm. back up and say, oh, my rights are being violated. Well, sometimes, in my opinion, you don't have enough sense to even know what's good for you. Yeah. So let somebody tell you sometimes. Yeah. You know, Ruthie's very, he, she's on um, Dr. Jones and myself a lot, mostly Dr. Jones, uh, <laughs> about sugars and this and that. Carbohydrates. And carbohydrates. And... You know, we can just say, you know, I don't want to listen to Ruthie, and but he just laughs it off and just goes right in, does what he wants to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he has been doing good. He, he's been yes, walking he's a lot better. and jogging and trying to do better, not eating as many sweets. And all of a sudden, I'm the one that's doing horrible. And I used to never eat between meals, never thought of it, never thought of food between, I never ate breakfast. I'd eat lunch, never thought about food again till supper time. Now it's so weird. I don't know. It's something in my mind. I've got to get it straight because it's going, uh, I would say it's going up, but I'm going downhill quickly. You should eat breakfast at a certain time every morning. You should eat lunch at a certain time every day. And you should eat your supper at a certain time every day. Are you French? No, I'm not. <laughs> Plus, you're supposed to have three snacks a day. Oh, you're not French. No. No. Three, three small meals and three snacks. Well, Ruthie, I need to cut back on my meals. I sure don't need to add snacks. <laughs> so, um, well, if you cut way back on your meals, then you could add a small yeah. snack. I'm going to do better. It, it's just I need some encouragement. And um, Instead of a cup of oatmeal for breakfast, have a half a cup. Right. Or just have oatmeal, period. <laughs> I need to eat breakfast, you know. What's the old saying? And we've told everybody this. You eat breakfast like a king. You eat lunch like a queen. And you eat supper like a pauper. pauper. And so you're supposed to do better and have healthy snacks. Anywho, I, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only person struggling um, for whatever reason. All of a sudden, I guess age and stress. I don't know what, what makes a mind just want to look in the refrigerator every five minutes when you're not used to doing that. I used to like look at people and say, "Oh, you're you dream about food all the time, or you think about food. What's wrong with you?" But I, I'm I'm old enough to know that the first thing we say about somebody else is gonna swing right back around on you. So this judge is coming and around. You shall be judged. Yes, I'm not sure God says that. No, but it ha it's true. Yeah, <laughs> you were you were judging this person about what they ate or way they ate or whatever, and. So pretty soon, yeah. you you talked about it so much that it was it just became a song in your head. That's right. Very good. Whew. He's got to learn a new tune. Learn a new tune. 
Yeah, and yes. I can't sing very well, so we're in trouble. <laughs> all right, we have been given the uh, all clear sign to uh, sign off, and we will do that next week. We'll have some more homemade gifts that you can give to other people. Go out today and please encourage somebody. And we have a new schedule. We will be starting at 1 p.m. Uh, next week. We've got new um, shows coming on, and we're going to have to get out of here uh, from like 1 to 1.50 or whatever. So be here next week at 1 o'clock and go and encourage somebody right now. <laughs>